after 10,000 years, I'm free! Welcome back everyone, my name is Chet and this is Chet Chat. I know I've been away for a while, but I'm here again. And since we haven't been able to cover a lot of movies, I figured I will do a month breakdown of June 2016. And there's quite a few movies I've seen, and we gotta just get right into them and discuss how terrible this month was. Now I'm gonna give you these movies in no particular order of release or how good they are or whatever so just bear with me and let's just start off with the epic month of sequels. I guess we can start off with Now You See Me 2. It's a movie that is a sequel to Now You See Me, obviously. And it's pretty much about these magicians who perform these magic shows that are actually crimes and they do it because they're trying to get into this secret organization known as the Eye. And I, honestly I didn't like the first one that much because it just, it's just literally movie magic. There's nothing amazing about what's going on but the first one was kind of like a solid movie in the sense that it had good flow and it had an alright plot that was easy to follow. But Now You See Me 2 is just a big mess of nonsense. The characters are so uninteresting and there's so many double agents in the movie that it doesn't feel good. And the ending is just like, it's just like they try to make up for the garbage that they've been doing with like oh look what we did here look at look at all these people you didn't know about our little secret <laughs> it didn't work it didn't work they they do they do so much stupid stuff it it almost reminded me of how fast and the furious went off the rails like the first movie was about racing the second movie about racing the third movie was about heists and it just got crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier but now you see me they start off with their first movie being about magic and being about the eye, and then it jumps into crazy territory immediately. Like, they go all over the country, there's super magicians, and... It's garbage. For me, Now You See Me 2 is no good. So now let's just keep going on talking about more sequels. Let's talk about The Conjuring Part 2. The Conjuring, again, obviously, is a... I don't want to say sequel to The Conjuring Part 1 because it's pretty much a fictional biographical tale about these two people who help other people with demons and exorcisms and stuff but they don't perform the exorcism. Am I saying that right? I don't know. It's based on these two people. I'll show a picture of them or something because I can't remember their names. Well, I actually really liked The Conjuring, the first one, because it didn't feel like just a scary movie. It just made you feel uneasy. And that's what I want from horror movies now. I don't want to just be like, ah, ah, jumping, because you can jump because you see like a cat crawl out of a garbage can. That's not scary, it's just surprising. So I like when movies make you feel uneasy or unpleasant, like the Evil Dead remake, which was just like unpleasant. So The Conjuring 1 did that for me. The Conjuring 2, however, falls short drastically. It feels like the exact plot from Insidious. And I actually kind of like Insidious 2. Like, it, it felt like the same exact plot. Like, this medium who tries to help people ends up helping too many people to the point that one entity recognizes them and tries to pursue them. And that's exactly what happens in The Conjuring Part 2. The, the main character, she tries to help people, and she gets shook to the point by this entity that she wants to stop altogether. Then she sees this one family and she wants to help them out, and things go crazy. So all in all, The Conjuring is alright. I actually liked it more than Now You See Me 2, but that doesn't say much. But as a horror movie, it's still falls short by using not the same techniques that they did in the first movie, The Conjuring. Go watch it if you want, if you want to just finish the series of Conjuring, but, eh, 
Monster Manos. Now, I guess they could say this is an actual good sequel or part or continuation. It's not even like a sequel. But Finding Dory. Yeah. Finding Dory, honestly, had a hard time, in my opinion, winning me over because Zootopia came out earlier this year and that is probably still like one of the best movies that came out this year altogether. So stacking Finding Dory against the animated film Zootopia makes Finding Dory don't look that good. It's a very simple story, but it gives you the feels. When they show baby Dory, it's like so adorable and she suffers from memory short-term memory loss and she can't store her information um, I, I didn't really watch too much of the first movie finding nemo so maybe they did discuss that in the first one so that's it might not be news to you guys but to me it was kind of news dory slowly gets her memories of her family who she lost through like this terrible incident and she ends up finding her way to where her family might be and you learn a lot about Dory's backstory, actually. It's like really in-depth backstory about where Dory came from. And it's pretty interesting. I actually like that aspect of it. And it actually develops the character of Dory and how she learns how to cope with her, I don't want to say, I guess you can call it a disability. So like these movies that are geared toward children have these really important life lessons about learning how to cope with who you are and not trying to change who you are, but uh, embrace who you are and go about your life knowing who you are. And that's what Finding Dory does. It's really strange to get that from this little movie. I actually liked Finding Dory. It's not the best animated movie I've seen because of Zootopia, but very, very good. Very good. I definitely recommend Finding Dory. Now, this is the last movie I'll talk about that is a actual sequel. And it is probably a very big disappointment to people who've seen it already. And that is uh, Independence Day Resurgence. That movie right there, that movie right there, is one big pile of garbage, man. I'm sorry to tell everybody this. I really didn't like Independence Day Resurgence. I had medium expectations hoping that it's like just all right because independence day the first movie is not an amazing movie it's it's a movie it's like oh yeah alien but that's pretty much it like it's kind of like how people were complaining that oh the karate kid remake is ruining the original karate kid i was like yo karate kid is not exactly a great movie man relax so that's the same thing here independence day is not a great movie independence day resurgence is not better than that all right movie so that's already bad. There's a lot of things wrong with it. Like, there's no character development. The main reason I went to see the movie is because of Jeff Goldblum. And he's barely in the movie. Like, maybe 25 minutes. He's not that important. The things that he does in the movie seems like somebody else could have done it. And there were people with him that were as smart as him. It's not like how he was the hero of the first movie. He's just, he's just in there because, oh, Jeff Goldblum was in the first movie. And, like... And nobody else is in the movie other than Jeff and the president guy. I forget his name. And that's it. The president's daughter, who is actually a good actress from It Follows, she has no development. And Will Smith's son in the movie has no character development. All you know is that he's just nothing like Will Smith. <laughs> and then you got Thor's brother in there, who I felt could have been taken out the movie completely and that character could have just been will smith's son in the movie and i don't know it's like maybe they didn't want to have an interracial relationship or something i was like halfway through the movie you're gonna you're gonna feel like they should have been a couple why didn't they do that but i don't know gotta have these these uh same couples you know too risque for the movies in the 21st century but anyway other than those terrible things I'll have to say that the graphics and the special effects are really, really, really awesome. I almost recommend seeing this movie in 3D because I was seeing a lot of moments in the movie where I was like, 
that'll look better in 3D. Like the holograms and the guns, the 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 fights, the space battles and stuff were pretty cool. See, I don't want to spoil the story, which is also a very bad part of the movie too. Like you're gonna nitpick the hell out of it. Not even nitpicks, like just big chunks. Like this was dumb. As soon as you see the first thing, like that's dumb too. But just know that the story is not that good. I don't want to tell you about it if you want to still see it. You should definitely still see it. So you know. You just increase your knowledge on what makes a bad movie bad. So Independence Day, go see it. But don't expect much. Well, that's the end of those sequels. So let's get to some standalone movies. But this first movie, I was very surprised that it was in June. It leaked January movie essence from it. I'm talking about Central Intelligence with Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart. I have nothing to say, really. <laughs> it's a eh, movie. It's a January movie in June. Basically, how you feel about the trailer, that's probably how you're going to feel about the movie. The trailer is what the movie is. They try to give you this uh, conspiracy that might be happening between these two characters, and they keep weaving this conspiracy throughout the whole movie, but you're like, I know what the conspiracy is. I'm not falling for your little trick. So the conspiracy is not strong enough to make you keep guessing until the end of the movie. Because you, you, you see who's acting in different positions. And you're like, they're not going to make these actors do this. And lo and behold, that's what happens. So don't expect too much from Central Intelligence. It's a January movie masquerading as a June movie where it shouldn't be. I guess because The Rock is in it. Like The Rock refuses to be in January or something. Still go see it. It's not going to hurt hurt your wallet, but, you know, see it. Now, this movie that I'm about to talk about, I had zero expectations from. And I don't know much about it, because I barely played the game. It's a video game movie called Warcraft. And you have to be very specific with that title. It's called Warcraft. It's not World of Warcraft. It's Warcraft, as in Warcraft 1, the first video game. So, if you never played the game... I'll say that this movie is definitely not for you. Because I, I definitely didn't play the game. I only played like a little bit of World of Warcraft. And when I sat down in a movie and I'm looking at the people around me, they look like people that play this game. I'm sorry, the stereotype. Fat guys with, white, with glasses and neck beards. And they were hyped too. So I knew they played the game. I'm not profiling if it's true. You know what I'm saying? I am fat as well. And I have glasses, but I didn't play the game. I'm sorry. As soon as the movie starts, they do all these these name drops, and they, they they move to these different locations, and they drop in the names of the location. And I'm seeing the guys getting excited about it, but I'm like, I really don't care. I don't care what's going on. Stop moving around so much. I don't understand what you're doing. It felt like is a it's a movie made by a fan for fans of the movie. It's not a movie made for the essence of. In- entertainment it's made for look this is your game we made a movie of the game that you played but for people who didn't play it i'm sorry this movie's not for you man it felt so uninteresting i didn't care about any of the characters i didn't care about what was going on there was only like one really cool part in the movie to me and then the movie ends in a weird way like i knew about the ending of the video game so i don't think people who don't know it, will appreciate what happens in the ending. It's like, what the hell happened? How are you going to end a movie like this? It's like, oh, you're going to save for part two? Okay, funny, what'd you... People get angry about that crap. But, that's that's the tale of it. Apparently, the movie did really good overseas, so I feel like this is definitely going to get a sequel. So, there might be some hope for the next one. I feel like the next one might be better, because the characters will be established, and... You don't have to name drop anymore. Please stop the name dropping. And also another upsetting note, there's a there's supposed to be wizards and stuff in the movie and they don't do enough wizardry. Some of the lamest wizard fights I've ever seen. Other than Harry Potter's and Lasers. You know what? I actually forgot one sequel movie, and I can't believe I forgot it, because it's one of the most enjoyable movies of the month. And that is Oh my god. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. So, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, I loved it. 
because it is a straight up live action cartoon. Yes, the movie does a lot of things right and there's a lot of stupid things that happen, but you can overlook it if you just think of it as a live action cartoon. See, pretty much this movie starts off showing the Ninja Turtles instead of showing a human. And they focus a lot on the Ninja Turtles and how they feel kind of underappreciated. And they feel like they're getting tired of hiding from the public. Hence the title, Out of the Shadows. I don't want to go too much into the story because I really want you guys to watch it and enjoy it fully. You're just going to have a lot of fun. You're going to get to see some Ninja Turtles fighting. You're going to get to see Bebop and Rocksteady as you see in the trailer. There's actual good scenes between the Ninja Turtles and them. Again, the human characters aren't that interesting. Casey Jones is like the worst Casey Jones that you've ever seen. Maybe. I do like Oliver Queen. The guy who plays him, at least. He's like a nice actor, I guess, but like, I feel like the arrow is better in his, I don't know, it's like weird. When you see, when you see Casey Jones, you'll understand what I mean. He's kind of weird. There are, there are a lot of things that you can nitpick about the movie, but you have to keep hammering, hammering it into your head. This is a cartoon movie. Stop picking at it for perfection. You dare to have fun. You will enjoy it if you dare to have fun. And I'll just straight up outright tell you, it's not too much of a spoiler, because you know Michael Bayism, even though he, I don't think he directed this movie directly. But, yeah, there's definitely going to be another Ninja Turtles movie. So, I totally recommend watching TMNT Out of the Shadows. I enjoyed it. Probably one of my most favorite movies of the month. Another strange movie for June came out it was called uh, the free state of jones with matthew mcconaughey and other people directed by the people called the h brothers or something like that hr brothers and i think they worked on um, hardcore henry as well so they're kind of like action oriented so i could see what happens in the free state of jones which is pretty much a history lesson it's like a movie based on actual events. These people existed in our history timeline. So pretty much the Free State of Jones takes place around the Civil War where they had the Union and the Confederates fighting each other. Matthew McConaughey's character, he is fed up of fighting a war for the Confederates because he feels like he's just fighting for the rich people to stay rich where the poor people have to die for the rich so he fights back and that part of the movie is interesting nice to see this guy stand up for what he believes in even though he it's not like he agrees with the union he just thinks it's wrong for somebody to tell him what he should fight for even though he doesn't agree with it but then after a while the movie kind of goes in this like weird lesson about racism and it feels like Mississippi Burning, although Mississippi Burning is a great movie, it just feels out of place in this movie. Because in the ending, it's like, you had such a great momentum, and now you're talking about this serious subject, and it just destroys the flow of the movie. I'll recommend seeing it, but just be prepared for that slowdown out of nowhere for this important lesson that doesn't really fit in the movie all it does is make me feel awkward in my movie theater it's primarily white people <laughs> i swear well after after the movie i went to the bathroom and there was this white guy in the bathroom and we were just mad quiet like hello black man hey oppressor and then finally the last movie i saw which was still dumb this month was bad man i'm sorry is the the shallows uh, this generation's jaws i guess i really don't know what to say about this movie pretty much you get this character who has like this they tried to build up her character like oh she she her parents her mom died and she she doesn't like her dad that much and 
she dropped out of school and oh she went to this place that her mom used to go to and apparently her mom didn't tell her that this place could get infested with sharks well one really really smart shark this is like the shark that like in an alternate universe of deep blue sea it actually escaped this shark it, it seems a little more intelligent than a regular shark or something she goes out in the ocean she's surfing and then she gets attacked by this shark she actually gets bit in her leg and she escapes to this rock and she has to make moves because she was told that this little rock actually is an island at night but by high noon high tide comes and she won't have that rock anymore and she'll pretty much get eaten by the shark so you see her make these intelligent macgyver moves but they try to say how she is a um how she's smart by being a med student but i don't think the things that she does is in line is is in the same line of work as a med student they could have easily made her like the girl from your next who was like just her her parents raised her as a survivalist so she knows how to deal with situations but this girl she's just a med student and she is able to become macgyver out of nowhere there are some instances where the medic the medical knowledge comes into play but other than that it's like far-fetched there's a lot of stupid stuff in that movie. I was cracking up by the end of the movie. I think people were probably like, why are you laughing? I'm like, you should see what's happening on the screen, though. Maybe you guys will like it. I, it's it's alright. Like, if it came on TV, I'm definitely going to watch it. It's a shark movie. We don't have those anymore. <laughs> that the, this, this movie is probably better than some of the Jaws sequels. I think, I think it's almost like on par with Jaws 2, which doesn't say much because Jaws 2 is pretty bad. Joe's one is like just the end all be all. The Shallows. Watch it. Check it out. So that about wraps it up for June 2016. I'm sure there are a bunch of movies that I didn't see. Like some limited releases like the uh, Neon Demon. And some other things I've seen like in other theaters. But you know, we don't have time to watch them all. You can only watch what you can. Like, comment, and subscribe. I would definitely appreciate it. Again, just tell me what I can do to improve, what you like, what you don't like. Just tell me. Let me know. See you next month.